Okay then guys, up the plot. <laughs> Still here, I haven't lost the plot. <laughs> A quick look round. Um, I put some tromboncino on the end of these two beds here. Um, I'm not going to make them climb, I'm going to let these go on the ground so they become long curly ones. So we've got a few onions and shallots in there still. Um, loads of calendula popping up. There's the SSPC potatoes. Give them a water in later on. So even though they're in buckets, uh, even though we had the rain, still need to keep on top of it with the buckets. I've done a walk around for quite a while now actually. These are the uh, rock and court potatoes and two courgette attainer polka. I do like those ones, nice and yellow. And again, look, some more calendula in there. More spuds. Uh, I've got a bit of space here. Not sure what to do with that at the moment. Then again, I've got some more brassicas. Um, that's cauliflower igloo and a chambord in there. Tomatoes are doing well. I've got to tie these up again. Some of them I'm going to have to put longer canes in. The ones on the, uh, the ones that are going up the framework, if you like, like that. that. A bit, sorry, got to put some quite longer canes in. There's one dying. Um, oh, what's the name of that one? Uh, Alice's Dream. It's right at the far end by the potato bucket. Can't see. Oh, I've got to get those flowers off as well. Evidence shows that taking the flowers off either increases the yield or doesn't increase the yield. But leaving the flowers on never increases the yield, if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Blueberries doing all right at the far end in the pots there, along with some more potatoes. And we got uh, Cauliflower Autumn Giant. The front six and the back six are um, Savoy Ventus. I'm going to clear most of this lot, I think. The Brussels just haven't taken off this year. They're not really growing. Um, so I'm going to clear that lot. Right, this is what the main, re main reason for coming up today, is get some of these broad beans. Now, I was going to leave the plants in with the thought that might be some more flowers coming, but I can't see any more flowers. Yes, I'll leave the plants in because I could see some baby ones in there, look, see? Yeah, trim them back a little bit. Right, and potatoes are growing well in the runner bean frame, which is more than I can say for the runner beans. But they are gradually twining up, look. In fact, that's gone up the blooming hoe, that one. <laughs> I'll untwine that and put it up the stick properly. Whereas the corn, bumblebee on the nasturtium down there, look. Lovely. Beautiful. Borage has uh, gone mad again. And this time I will deadhead it. I'm not having borage everywhere, like on the other plot. Climbing frame's going well. We've got loads in here. I'm just going to rattle a few off for you. Blue Lake. We got uh, Bill and Val's Minnesota Midget Melons, Vento Cucumbers, P. Uh, Rose, Rose, Rose Crone, Rosa Crone, sorry, and Angel Beans. And the other side going that way, you can't see them all because that's uh, nasturtiums in the way now, but they're growing. We got um, more P. Rosa Crone, another Tromboncino or two. Pea beans, some more cucumbers, and a uh, Yukuchi curry at the far end. Right, black currant's doing well. Uh, I had to top the pond up the other day. Yeah, I think all the little froglets are gone now. I'm just leaving the, uh, the rhubarb that's gone over, just leaving that leaves on for a bit of shade for some wildlife. And this is like my wildlife area, really. Um, yeah, it's all right. I'll give it a tidy up later in the year. The pear's doing well, but there wasn't much blossom on it. And my apple tree, well, that's all right, it's going all right. Okay, just behind me here, uh, blue banana squash this end, and Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, we've got some on there. got some fruits on that one. Uh, baby Blue Hubbard down there. The corn is early bird. And that's interplanted with um, beetroot. Different beetroots. The corn on this bed is the other one. It's the uh, solstice. And just a few flowers here, look. Three 
three lots of leeks here. Um, Odin Longstanton, uh, Mammoth Blanche and a Bulgarian Giant. And just some flowers in amongst it again. Now these peas are growing like mad. They'll be ready soon. Um, four different types in there, I think, yeah. Gloria Devon, Terrain, Kelvin and Wonder and more Terrain. So I think that's what they are anyway. Ah, that's where I left my brassicas. <laughs> I knew I put them somewhere. Um, what are these then? These are Spring Hero. A couple worth keeping there. They could, yeah. That's uh, Zephyr Squash and Hawkesbury Wonder Beans, Dwarf Beans. I don't think I'm going to get much out of those yard long beans at the end there. The um, Whatever animal it is, they decided they like digging in there and they just lifted everything really. Miscellaneous lettuce in this bed here. Um, Soda Eclipse Squash, Butterbush Squash in the centre and Early White Squash. And a bit of a gap at the top end there. So, here we are then. Let's go and get some broad beans. There's actually two different types of broad bean there. Um, exhibition long pod this side. And the pink uh, crimson flowered ones that side. Yeah, crimson flowered. So, I'm going to do long, long pods first, I think. Obviously the biggest ones are at the bottom, so... Yeah, there's quite a few to leave on, actually. So I'll leave those. Got to say, quite happy with that lot. Mostly exhibition long pods, and I picked a few of the crimson, uh, pink flower ones as well. That's about two thirds of them, I think. There's uh, there's quite a few still growing, so I'll get those another couple of days. Cool, cool, cool. Whew! A bit sunny out here. <laughs> right, um, as you know, my carrots have been a disaster. So I'm going to repeat the experiment with wallpaper paste, um, yeah, and give it one more go. Do I reckon? And uh, this time I'm using carrot Norfolk. And what's it say about that? Attractive bright orange roots with superb flavour, good source of vitamin C's and antioxidants, high quality variety and resistance to cavity spot. Never heard of cavity spot, live and learn. So, here we go then. I'll do the same again, I'll do one row with the uh, wallpaper paste and one row direct sewn. And I'll whiz you forward a bit, you don't want to watch all this. It takes a while, doesn't it? Okay, that's just about set. Yeah, that'll do. I want to do this time, I'm going to put the seeds in the bag. <laughs> Half of them anyway. And the wind's picked up now. Here we go. Eh? And they can go in my pocket. Yep, 
I'll give it a go. It's a funny bag this one, so I'll have to cut it somewhere a bit in the middle there. Yeah. Right, at the front garden. Okay then, here we go. Oh, too bad, it feels like they're all in there anyway. Yeah, only a few left. Well, let's put that there a second. The drill's been pre watered, so both of them. I'm going to do, um, I can't remember, oh, resistor fly over there. few ants in here. Oh yeah, let's get that covered over. I'll tell you what I'm going to do as well. I'll put them. Put that one there for now and that one there. Just so I know where they are. And I'll make a proper label in a minute. This works out about a half inch deep I suppose. Right, there we are, all in and watered with the, the, the cat prevention net above it. Uh, fingers crossed this lot works. Oh, yeah. Okay then, now it's time for the broad beans to get naked. This could take a while. Just on the oops, lookout for little tiny holes in the pods as I'm doing it. Pods? Yes, was there a pod? Yeah. Just to see if there's any uh, sort of maggot or beetle fly or whatever. I was lucky with the peas, very lucky. Perhaps the, because um, they were such early peas, perhaps, perhaps the, uh, whatever fly it is, it pea moth, isn't it? Pea moth, yeah wasn't around so well here we are then last couple took about uh, 20 minutes I suppose just over it's a bit more hard work than the peas because the <laughs> you push the beans out of the pods a little bit there we are so that's about two-thirds of the beans I've got I mean uh, the ones up there are the small ones at the moment so they'll grow a bit I'm going to go and quickly blanch these, stick them in some freezer bags, single portion freezer bags. I'm not going to vacuum pack them, waste of time with these. And, um, well, yeah, and uh, get on with water in the garden because, uh, yeah, the beans always look tired in the afternoon, don't they? You know, but a little bit of watering soon perks them up. Right then, in the compost with this lot. And here's the broad beans all frozen down. Now, I tried to take this photograph on the uh, the garden table, but the bags just frosted over straight away and you couldn't see what was in them anyway. So we got the broad beans in there, the peas from the other day. Uh, there's a curry on the top shelf, there's bags of shallots, there's chilli, there's spag bowl, there's tomato sauces, all sorts in there. I love these little countertop freezers, brilliant. Um, hope you've enjoyed this one, guys. Uh, take care, look after yourselves, and I will catch you on the next video.